Hello everyone, welcome to Success Education. Today we'll be doing the workbook solution for science for standard 8, chapter number 4 that is materials, metals and non-metals. Before that, if you have not subscribed my channel till now, please do subscribe it for more videos. So we'll be starting with the MCQs. First one, which of the following elements is metal? It's option number D, sodium. Second, which of the following elements is non-metal? It's option number A, sulfur. Third, which metal exists in liquid state at room temperature? It's option number D. Mercury. Fourth, which non-metal exists in liquid state at room temperature? It's option number B. Bromine. Fifth, which metal is stored in kerosene? It's option number C. Sodium. Sixth, which metal is chemically very reactive? It's option number A. Potassium. Seventh, which metal can be easily cut by a knife? It's option number C. Sodium. 8. Which gas is released when metal reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid? It's option number B. Hydrogen. 9. Which of the following metal strips burns with a white bright flame when kept on a candle flame? It's option number B. Magnesium. 10. What is the nature of non-metallic oxide? It's option number B. Acidic. 11. Which metal can react easily with cold water? It's option number D. Sodium. Twelfth. Which metal has the highest conductivity of electricity? It's option number A. Silver. Now we'll continue with question number two that is fill in the blanks. First one. Phosphorus is a very reactive non-metal. Second. Metals react with acids to produce hydrogen gas. Third. The foil of aluminum is very uh, sorry, is used to wrap food items. Fourth, chlorine is used in treatment for water purification. Fifth, the non-metal sulfur is used for making crackers. Sixth, copper and aluminum metals are used in manufacturing electric wires. Seventh, gold and silver metals are used for making jewelry and ornaments. Now we'll continue with question number three that is answer the following questions in one word. First one, give the name of a metallic element which is lighter than water, it is sodium. Second, what is iron compound formed when iron reacts with water called, it is rust. Third, which non-metal is lustrous, it is iodine. Fourth, which non-metal is a good conductor of electricity, it is graphite. Fifth, what is the smallest unit of an element called, it is atom. Sixth, what is produced when sulfur reacts with oxygen? It is sulfur dioxide gas. Seventh, what is the property of metals by which they can be drawn into wires called? It is ductility. Eighth, which non-metallic element is stored in water? It is phosphorus. Ninth, from which metal can thin wire be drawn? It is gold. Tenth, which metal foil is used for decorating sweets? It is silver. Eleventh, which among aluminium, iron and copper is the most reactive metal? It is aluminium. Twelfth, where is the iron element found in our body? It is in hemoglobin. Now we will continue with question number 4 that is true or false. First one, generally non-metals react with acids. It is false. Second, sodium is a very reactive metal. It is true. Third, Copper displaces zinc from zinc sulfate solution. It is false. Fourth, bromine is a liquid metal. It is false. Fifth, wires can be drawn from sulfur. It is false. Sixth, generally metals possess the property of malleability. It is true. Seventh, potassium is a very reactive metal. It is true. Eighth, copper displaces iron from aqueous solution of iron sulfate. It is false. Now we'll continue with question number 5 that is answer the following questions in one sentence. First one, give the name of four non-metals which are in solid form. So carbon, sulfur, phosphorus and iodine are solid non-metals. Second, give the name of four non-metals which are in gaseous form. So oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen and chlorine are gaseous non-metals. Third, give four names of metallic elements. Iron, aluminium, copper and nickel are metallic elements. Fourth, what is malleability? The property of metals by which they can be beaten into thin sheets is called malleability. Fifth, what is formed when sulfur dioxide is dissolved in water? 
sulfurous acid is formed when sulfur dioxide is dissolved in water. Six, which two metals are used for making electric wires? So, aluminium and copper metals are used for making electric wires. Seventh, what is the effect of sulfurous acid on litmus papers? So, the blue litmus paper turns red by sulfurous acid. Eighth, what is the effect of magnesium oxide on moist litmus paper? So, the red litmus paper turns blue. Now, we'll continue with question number six. That is, answer the following questions in short. First one. What happens when dilute sulfuric acid is poured on an aluminium piece? Why? Dilute sulfuric acid reacts with aluminium piece to form aluminium sulfate and hydrogen gas. And the equation for that is aluminium plus dilute sulfuric acid gives aluminium sulfate plus hydrogen. Second one. Write word equation of the reaction involved when iron nails are placed in copper sulfate solution. When iron nails are placed in copper sulfate solution, displacement reaction takes place in which iron displaces copper. The blue color turns into green. Equation of reaction is as follows. Nails of iron plus copper sulfate gives iron sulfate plus copper. Third question. What happens when a magnesium ribbon is heated in presence of air? Give the chemical equation of the reaction. It starts burning with a white flame and white powder is formed which is called magnesium oxide. Chemical equation is magnesium plus oxygen gives magnesium oxide. Fourth question. Can we store solution of zinc sulfate in a vessels of aluminium? Why? No. Aluminium is more active metal than zinc. When a solution of zinc sulfate is kept in a vessels of aluminium, aluminium can displace zinc from zinc sulfate and so there will be hole in vessels of aluminium. Fifth question. State four uses of metals. Uses of metals are First one. For making utensils that is of copper, aluminium and iron. Second. For making electric wires that is from copper and aluminium. Third, for making bridges and buildings that is from iron and other metals. Fourth, for making ornaments that is from gold and silver. Fifth, for making ships, trains, satellites, etc. Sixth question, state two uses of each, sulfur and phosphorus. Uses of sulfur are, sulfur is used as a fungicide. It is used in black gunpowder for the vulcanization of natural rubber. Uses of phosphorus are First one, it is used in the manufacture of fertilizers. Second, it is used in manufacture of safety matches, pyrotechnics and inflammatory shells. Now we'll continue with question number 7 that is explain giving scientific reasons. First one, sodium is stored in kerosene. Sodium is a very reactive metal. They react with air and water but cannot react with kerosene. It is heavier than kerosene, so it sinks in kerosene, so sodium is stored in kerosene. Second, phosphorus is stored in water. Phosphorus is an active non-metal. Phosphorus reacts with oxygen and produces phosphorus pentoxide. Phosphorus is heavier than water and do not react with water, so it cannot react with air if it is stored in water. Now third question. Small amount of copper is added to gold and silver while making jewellery. Why? Gold and silver are soft metals. They can be bent easily and wear out easily. The alloy made by mixing small amount of copper with gold is hard. Due to this, the ornaments do not wear out or bend easily when made of this alloy. Hence, small amount of copper is added to gold and silver while making jewellery. Now we'll continue with question number 8 that is write four points of difference between metal and non-metal. First point, malleability. Metal can be beaten into thin sheets and non-metal malleability, brittle cannot be beaten into thin sheets. Second one is ductility. Metals can be drawn into wires and non-metals cannot be drawn into wires. Third one is conductivity of heat. So, metals are good conductors of heat and non-metals are bad conductors of heat. Fourth one is again conductivity of electricity. 
so metals are good conductors of electricity and non metals are bad conductors of electricity now we'll continue with question number 9 that is match the following first one gold it's option number d jewelry second one iron it's option number c machinery third one copper it's option number b electric wire fourth one mercury it's option number a thermometer now the second part of match the following first one metal oxide it's option number b basic in nature second non metal oxide it's option number d acidic in nature third sodium it's option number e kept in kerosene fourth one phosphorus it's option number c kept in water now the third part of match the following first one liquid metal it's option number b mercury second one reactive metal it's option number e sodium third one liquid non metal it's option number a bromine and fourth gaseous non metal it's option number c chlorine now we'll continue with question number 10 that is answer the following questions in detail first one give the examples of each bases and acids used in the laboratory and write their molecular formula so a1 is bases and their molecular formula first one is zinc hydroxide second magnesium hydroxide and third calcium hydroxide so you can see the molecular formula from the table and complete it b1 is acids and their molecular formula so the name of the acids are first one hydrochloric acid second sulfuric acid and third nitric acid you can see from the table and complete the molecular for formula of the acids second one state the physical properties of metals so the physical properties of metals are first they can be drawn into thin wires that is ductility second they are good conductors of heat and electricity third they can be hammered into thin sheets that is malleability fourth they produce ringing sound when beaten fifth they are shiny and have bright surface sixth generally metals are heavy and hard that is exceptions are sodium potassium magnesium and aluminum are light metals and seventh one metals are usually solids exception is mercury that is a liquid metal now the third question state the physical properties of non metals so the physical properties of non metals are first non metals exist in solids liquids and gaseous state second they are lighter than metals third they do not have metallic luster exception is graphite and iodine that have metallic luster fourth one they do not produce ringing sound when beaten fifth when hammered they break up into pieces that is they are non malleable they cannot be hammered into sheets sixth one they are poor conductors of heat and electricity now we'll continue with the activities first one to find the effect of beating metal and non metal so the substances are already given now the apparatus and materials are iron nail coal piece a piece of aluminum wire pencil lead and the procedure is put the iron nail on a hard surface give a few blows with hammer on the iron nail try to hit hard then repeat the same kind of treatment on other objects record your observations in the table given below so the observation is iron nail that is flattens and does not break into pieces coal piece breaks into pieces aluminum wire also flattens and does not break into pieces and pencil lead breaks into pieces and the conclusion is metals are malleable whereas non metals are non malleable second activity to check the electrical conductivity of metals and non metals in this activity also the substances are already given and the apparatus and the materials are iron nail sulfur coal piece copper wire electric tester that is cell bulb conducting wire and rubber band and the procedure is arrange the electric tester as shown in the figure keep free the two ends of the wire that is a and b keep an iron nail in junction with the two ends of the conducting wire and complete the circuit note whether the bulb gives light or not similarly put different objects in contact with the two ends of the conducting wire note whether the bulb gives light or not every time now the observation is in iron nail bulb lights up so it is a good conductor of electricity 
second one is sulfur and this bulb does not lights up so it's a poor conductor of electricity third one coal piece bulb again does not lights up and it's a poor conductor of electricity and fourth one copper wire uh, the bulb lights up so it is a good conductor of electricity and the conclusion is metals are good conductors of electricity while non metals are poor conductors of electricity now the third activity is check the nature of sulfur dioxide obtained by heating sulfur so the apparatus and materials are powder of sulfur deflagrating spoon candle gas jar lead water and red and blue litmus papers and the procedure is take a small amount of sulfur powder in a deflagrating spoon heat it on candle flame as sulfur starts burning introduce the spoon into the gas jar cover the lid and ensure that the gas produced does not escape from the jar add a small amount of water in the jar and cover the jar with the lid quickly shake the ga uh, gas jar well test the solution with red and blue litmus papers and the observation is blue litmus paper changed to red but there is no effect on red litmus paper and the conclusion is sulfur dioxide is an acidic oxide in nature now the fourth activity to understand the reaction of sodium metal with water so the apparatus and materials are piece of sodium metal beaker water tongs filter paper piece of cotton cloth red and blue litmus papers and the procedure is take a 250 ml beaker and fill it half with water cut a small piece of sodium metal carefully dry the piece of sodium metal wrap it in a small piece of cotton cloth put the wrapped sodium piece into the beaker containing water and observe carefully test the solution with red and blue litmus papers now the observation is sodium metal reacts vigorously with water and catches fire the beaker becomes hot during the reaction the solution turns red litmus paper blue but no effect on blue litmus paper and the conclusion is sodium metal reacts with water and produces basic solution now the fifth activity is to understand the reaction of metals and non metals with dilute hydrochloric acid and dilute sulfuric acid so first one is magnesium ribbon and reaction with hydrochloric acid and a reaction with dilute sulfuric acid you can see from the table and completed all the metals and non metals that are given in the table okay sixth one is to uh, sixth activity that is to study displacement reaction the substances are already given and the apparatus and materials are copper sulfate zinc sulfate iron sulfate zinc granules iron nails copper turnings beaker and water and the procedure is take 500 ml beakers and label them as a b c d and e take 50 ml of water in each beaker in beakers a and b dissolve a spoon of copper sulfate in beakers c and e dissolve zinc sulfate and in beaker d dissolve iron sulfate add zinc granules in beaker a and put iron nail in beaker b put copper turnings in beaker c and d put iron nail in beaker e observe the change in different beakers now the observation is in beaker a zinc replaces copper from copper sulfate solution and the blue color of the solution disappears a red powdery mass of copper settles at the bottom of the beaker in beaker b iron replaces copper sulfate solution to form iron sulfate there is no change in beaker c d and e now the conclusion is a displacement reaction took place in beakers a and b and no displacement reaction took place in beakers c and d and here we come to the end of chapter number 4 that is materials metals and non metals i hope you understood the complete chapter if you have any doubts you can write in the comment section i'll surely try to answer all the questions thank you for watching my video and do subscribe my channel for more updates thank you